Hello people, it's Cara here and I am, as you know, so, so mad. Great to be back with you. Um, seems like forever since I've been doing any recording. Um, and a happy new year to you all. I hope you're all safe and well. Um, you know, various tears going on in the country right now. But wherever we are, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I genuinely hope you are fit and well. Um, so today um, I'm going to bring the first video of the year to you and I want to say thank you in advance um, to uh, lots of you actually. Uh, lots of you have recently subscribed, thank you. Um, lots of you have recently followed me on Instagram, thank you very much. Um, and especially thank you to those who have spent their time to comment um, on either of those platforms and help me decide on which videos to come up with next. So thank you for that. Um, so the options were um, uh, sewing plans for 2021. Uh, there was a shop my fabric sash with me. Um, there was a recent makes and also there was how, to, how do I match my fabric to patterns or patterns to fabric. A sort of a chicken and egg situation going on there. And it was quite a close run thing actually, but sewing plans for 2021 came out as top on both platforms. Um, so that's what I'm doing. So I'm actually filming um, in, um, I'm going to, I'm going to show on YouTube the videos in the order of which you've asked me, but I'm actually filming in them um, in a different way in order to capture um, how I've created my plans. So today's video um, actually comes, uh, my sewing plans video today comes on the back of um, shopping my stash actually, um, because that seemed like a really good place to start um, for me, because I want to, like we all do, want to make sure that um, the ratio of using my fabric stash up to um, buy new fabrics stays at a sensible level. So what are my plans for 2021? Let's have a look. Now I think I shared with you once before the current state of my house in our we are moving at some stage in 21, 2021 and um, I packed away my fabric stash which is in these boxes here um, it's got to be two or three months ago now oh it's no, no heating on in this room at the moment um, because obviously we're not using it and as you can see it's absolutely full, full of stuff so I'm going to grab out these boxes um, and I'll meet you back when I'm on back on the table in a warmer room okay so here here is my fabric stash now it's bigger than some and smaller than others um, and so uh, one thing you'll see in this footage is, is there no there is no hiding the fact that my house is in disarray so I apologize in advance for the normality um, of my video there's no perfect anything about my situation at the moment but that's okay um, so you can see here like literally they are boxed up and they're gonna go straight into the into the new sewing room but you know that'll happen one day um, but not today so I'm gonna crack these open um, and I'm going to put them into stash, stacks of, um, I'm not quite sure actually, either, either winter fabrics, summer fabrics, useful fabrics, not so useful. I'll decide as I go along and then I'll come back to you and tell you um, what I've got. Well, there you go. That was a fascinating exercise. And if you haven't done that for a while, I thoroughly recommend it. Um, I know a lot of you have been thinking of New Year's resolutions and plans for the new year ahead. While doing that, I've just discovered some wonderful fabrics that I'd forgotten that I've got. And you can see probably in the footage um, where I've like picked up a piece of fabric and opened it out, just estimating how much I've got there. So I've basically put this into three piles, although it looks like it's, well, it's four piles. Um, this one here is sort of viscose, cottons and lightweights. Then I've got jersey in the middle here, uh, at the back there, and this big piece here uh, is bottom weight fabrics. And then it turns out one of the boxes was kind of um, uh, 
not UFOs exactly, but repurposable fabric. So you may remember from a previous video, I've got a curtain there, I've got a beautiful bed set. In fact, there's two bed sets there and a bottom sheet, which I will repurpose. But for, the, for this video, I'm going to be putting that particular stash to one side. Talk about a funny old thing to be organising. Um, literally, I'm... Um, yeah because I'm not in my usual room and haven't got my camera set up as I would normally have. Um, <laughs> it's all a bit chaotic. But there was a really, really interesting thing to do. Um, as I said, I thoroughly recommend you going through it. I feel like I've just been fabric shopping, which is fantastic. Um, and I thought I'd just take you through them. Um, there'll be some ones that I'll talk about more than others, um, but that's natural. Um, and I would absolutely love to know what you think. Um, so please don't be shy, comment in, um, in the comments below what you think I should make things out of as we come across them. I've got some ideas myself but um, I'm not going to be able to make up all of this lot anytime soon. But um, yeah, let's so shop, shop my stash with me. So I'm going to start off with this. Um, this is a glorious um, viscose cotton. Um, it's got this lovely leopard print design on it. Um, I made an Emmy blouse out of this last year. And so I've got a good two metres left in that. Um, now, like, like all of us, I've got a couple of patterns stuck in my head that have yet to make it to fruition. And for this one, um, I'm absolutely delighted actually. This is gonna go to the to top of my pile because I think I think there's going to be enough there to make the sagebrush top. Um, it's actually cut out on my windowsill over here. You can just see the, the side of it. Pattern's cut out, um, but I haven't actually cut any uh, any fabric yet. Um, and here comes Alice with the old footprints. Oh, going into her bed. So hopefully, hopefully she won't be too noisy. Hello, darling. Can you come and say hello. There she is. Can you say hello when you're done? Look us up here. Hello. There's Alice. Mm. She's been sleeping all day. Um, now I've been working through Christmas, but my husband um, had some time off. My, my daughter obviously is off school um, over the holidays. <laughs> the secret life of a whippet is that they just sleep. They just sleep. That's all they do. They get up occasionally, look at you and just say, what? Um, I'm not getting up yet. <laughs> and they go back to sleep again. Um, they don't require a lot of exercise by, by breed standard, which is handy, because they just sleep. So anyway, so there's the first one, and um, so I'm absolutely thrilled with that, and I'm tempted to make us a little pile over here somewhere of the I must make now um, bits and pieces. So let me, let me log that over there, it's going to look really attractive. Hopefully it's just off camera. Now this bit, next piece of fabric, um, was an absolute treat. Um, now, as you know, I'm a Felicity Fabrics blogger um, and the beautiful Carolina Bliss, oh my word, um, as I film this, is actually an opportunity to become a guest blogger for Felicity Fabrics. Um, I'm sorry, but by the, time you could, by the time this film comes out, I imagine that that opportunity um, will be full. Um, but, you know, it might be a rolling opportunity for the, for the months ahead if you're wondering about it at least contact them and say you'd like to be added to a list for future or something um, or not um, but very kindly um, they sent us a Christmas present uh, just wasn't expecting it um, what a beautiful thing to do and they sent us all a piece of fabric um, I got some ha beautiful hand cream actually it's just in the window here um, this is this is um, by a company called Seams and it says Coutier's hand cream, shea butter, rose hip oil, um, and it absorbs instantly. I haven't had a chance to use it yet, but my um, fellow bloggers can't stop commenting on how brilliant it is. So I'm looking forward to um, looking forward to using that. But this fabric was part of the gift. I'll take my glasses back off again. Sorry. Um, and uh, is a metre, there's a metre and a half here and it's a metre wide. So I'd love your suggestions on what I can make with this glorious cotton. It's a little bit creased, I just washed it last night. Um, but I can't, oh, just look at the colours. I can't wait to make something. Now I'm thinking, I'm actually thinking of um, a very simple top. Um, I did a self-drafted um, linen top last year, which just had a sort of a, a boat neck um, and short sleeves with turn-ups, um, because I just think the fabric 
just needs to be able to stand on its own. Um, but if you have any, I'm not an Ogden Cami fan. Um, I could definitely see a, a silk cami made out of it, that sort of style. Um, but I think, yeah, also, I think it's maybe called the Joy Top, is that right? Um, it's a sort of a boat neck top with um, poofy sleeves, but I'm not sure there'd be enough fabric for the sleeve element of that. But oh, I've forgotten what company that other one's from, but that one is going to the top of the pile as well. But I can't make anything with it until I know what I want to make, if that makes sense. Of course it does, Cara. Next one I'm going to glide over. This is um, it's a beautiful red gingham, but actually this is a tablecloth. Um, my husband is a cyclist uh, as his hobby. I'm a sewist for mine, he's a cyclist in his. Um, and actually this is, uh, he went on a vi vintage bike run and they provided them with um, tablecloths uh, for the picnic. And he couldn't, he loves me, he knows me well, he couldn't resist um, picking up the tablecloth which, which was left behind um, for me to repurpose. Actually it's the same similar amount of fabric to the, to the tartan. So, but it is a beautiful piece of fabric. It's just not high on my list of priorities right now. I've got a lovely piece of lightweight um, cotton here that looks like denim. Um, again, I, well, I think that would make a beautiful Cali shirt or something like that, actually. Um, I made a Lulu dress out of this um, when that was released. Actually, there's not a lot of fabric there. I'd say there's probably, Mm, it's probably about two metres there by about a metre and a half, so ironically again about the same as, as the tartan. I made a Lulu dress out of that many years ago when it was first released and um, unfortunately for me it looked like, it looked like scrubs, um, which particularly this year wouldn't go down too well. Um, so it was the wrong, wrong pattern, no wrong fabric choice for the pattern for that one. Um, this one is a, a really lovely, uh, it's slightly stretchy. Um, so see through, hello, um, and this makes a beautiful blouse. Again, I've made an Emmy out of this one. Um, so there's enough here to make a, a top out of. Um, it's quite narrow actually now what I've got left there, but there's quite a lot of it. So again, I think I'll end up making, actually a, sage, a sagebrush top in that would look really lovely with a little cami on uh, in the summer. So I'll put that aside for the summer. Now, you know what I was saying, um, that going back through my stash um, meant that I uncovered some amazing things. Well, this, oh, this has got to be one of them. I honestly can't believe I haven't made this up already. This is an art gallery fabric. How have I got an art gallery fabric languishing in my stash of such beautiful quality? Um, this actually takes me back to the start of my YouTube channel because I just bought this, um, Actually, I think I was still employed in a in my previous job. So this is pre-redundancy, pre-COVID, all sorts of different things. Um, yeah, um, so it brings back a lot of memories for me, actually. Um, and I don't know why I haven't made something out of it. But sadly, it's the wrong sort of fabric for this time of year. Um, however, um, as I'm going to be putting these in an order of priority for my plans for the future, I will put that on the need to make something with it very soon pile. And you know what I actually quite like, uh, quite fancy doing, is the assembly line recently re released. Um, well, there's two patterns actually that come to mind. Uh, the assembly line re released a free pajama pattern. Um, now it's quite a simple, um, simple top, um, and, but it also has shorts with it with pockets. Um, the other option I think that would look really nice with that is um, the, another free pattern actually, um, and I'll put pictures of these in the, um, just somewhere here or somewhere here. Um, I'll put pictures in. Um, the Pe Peppermint magazine released a two-piece set last year. Again, it's quite a, a loose style um, trousers and top, but I think, um, I think that would look really lovely. I think I probably didn't make something with it because the pink, um, the pink on me, I'm not sure if it washes me out a little bit, um, it is very pale and as you can see it actually makes my skin look quite pale um, but it's gorgeous so I'm going to put that over there because I do need to do something with that. Now next, the next few fabrics I think come from my, to my Itokri fabric stash um, and again these are all sitting, oh <laughs> it's going to fall over, these all sit in my, um, for slightly later in the year 
um, but I love this colour. This is absolutely lovely. Um, again, if you've got any ideas, then please do let me know. This actually is quite a thick um, iCat cotton. Um, actually, do you know what I'm thinking about? Because you can't, it's not particularly see through. I certainly can't see necessarily through that. So, actually, a Stevie would be really nice in that. Um, they did the Stevie from Tinny the Buttons, that is, did an extension pack recently, didn't they? Um, so that that might work with that fabric. Um, there's two pieces of that because it came in two separate pieces, which is quite nice. These two are lightweight cottons for the summer, um, definitely enough to make um, a simple pair of shorts um, or maybe a nice a pair of trousers um, maybe something like the Luna trousers by, by the Friday Pattern Company um, they're sort of quite a billowy um, sort of almost like Aladdin style um, trouser in that I think that would be beautiful so such a lovely quality to that and I can't wait to make something with that this one another eye cat um, definitely going to make a, a caftan for um, the summer. I can't remember what I thought I was going to make with it. I think actually I was going to say I was going to make a bit of a velo dress by Sew Over It in this. She does a cover up, beach cover up, but a caftan, um, the, the Charlie caftan, well, it's quite thin actually, it's, um, it's quite narrow, sorry, not thin, um, narrow actually, if you can see there. Um, so I reckon that's a metre. Um, so I might not have enough to make the Charlie caftan because that's quite a big, um, a big pattern but I think there's enough there to make the Ravello um, and that's from the Summer Dreaming Sew so Over It book um, so yeah I think that that could be the case. Um, another very pretty cotton um, that again, again came from the um, Itokri fabric haul I'll leave that one for summer for sure. A, a few more summer weight ones coming up here beautiful um, viscose there, I think it's a couple of metres worth of that, so that adds to the summer pile. This one is a remnant of the original Ravello that I made. Um, I'm secretly hoping there's enough there to make a sagebrush top or something similar. Um, someone get, I haven't even made the sagebrush yet, so I don't sagebrush yet, I don't even know if I like it, but I've just seen so many versions of it. There's a little bit of, um, this is a Oh, what's this called now? That's completely gone out of my, my mind. It's like a, a cotton viscose. Now I'll put that one to one side for a minute because I can't quite, quite remember what that's called, but it's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful fabric. I got that from Merchant Mills. It's a, um, it's a remnant. Um, a cotton, don't need to worry about that one. That's, um, I've made face masks out of that one, actually. This is a be beautiful remnant from the, um, uh, Melio shirt I made um, courtesy of Felicity Fabrics so that's really beautiful there's enough left there to make a silk cami out of in the summer which I'm looking forward to again a, a remnant of cotton I don't need to talk about that one because it's kind of more of a linings material that one. Oh, this takes me back as well um, I was fortunate enough between losing one job and starting another um, I decided to take myself on a pilgrimage to um, London um, and go and visit um, <laughs> go and visit the London market. Roar. Oh my goodness, my head's fallen off. Place where they sell fabric all the way down through the middle of the street. Except it turns out I got up there and there wasn't any fabric in the middle of the street, but there was lots of fabric shops in it. I will put here somewhere the actual name of the road that I'm talking about. I apologise in advance that I've forgotten that. And this fabric, do you remember I talked about the pandas? I couldn't leave the pandas behind, basically. And this was 50p a metre. I mean, really, 50p a metre. It's crazy. So I've literally got... I've got enough pandas there to save the universe, actually. It's about three metres there. Lord knows what I was thinking. But actually, ooh, now there's an idea. Hmm, might be a bit, might be, might be a little bit too see-through. See what about if I made the lunar pyjamas 
um, and I've, I've recently made some of those, I'll, I'll explain more of those in um, a future video. Um, I can make a three piece set for the lunar pyjamas, so like a little cami um, and then the crossover top and the, and the trousers. That's actually a lovely idea. Ooh, may well escalate that to further up the pile. Mm, I quite like the idea of that. Um, now this fabric, this one up here, love this. I think I talked about this just before Christmas. And this was, and still could be, my um, uh, my original plan to make a sagebrush um, top out of. Um, but actually I really like the Emmy blouse as well from, from Seamworks. Um, so that could be the case for that one. Now at this point in this exercise, I feel like I'm just talking about three or four patterns the whole time. Um, <laughs> I have just unpacked my patterns. Again, these have all been in um, well, in storage. They've all been at next door, as you could just see there. Um, and uh, I think I'm just gonna have a quick rifle through these and just refresh my memory on some of the patterns I actually do have. <coughs> Excuse me. So it turns out this is a fascinating exercise to do. Um, once again, I've left my glasses on, I'll take those off, but um, fascinating. And I'm sitting here sort of beating myself up a little bit then I can only think of um, a few patterns for wovens. So I thought I'd just rifle through my own patterns and see why that was, why couldn't I come up with anything else? So here we are as a sort of visual representation. Um, I shall no longer beat myself up because of all of my patterns, only one, two, three, are um, woven tops. So I've got here the Libby shirt, um, the ultimate shift dress, which also can be a top, and the Stevie, which we mentioned. Um, these, these, um, there's plenty here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Uh, 14 um, plus one, two, at least three more jersey tops um, and then it, these are my bottom my favorites if you like bottoms patterns which we'll come on to when we're doing the weight uh, the bottom weight fabrics so I no longer feel bad about it also the other thing I will note is that um, all of the sort of lightweight um, top fabric that I've got uh, there isn't enough to make dresses out of there which is why I haven't been talking about that so fascinating so far so um, just the last of the sort of lightweight ones, if you like, I absolutely adore this. I uh, showed this in a fabric stash just before Christmas, I think, a um, uh, fabric haul rather, and uh, still this is high on my list. Um, and ha having become part of the Zadie Club, not that this is such a thing, but I'd st <laughs> I thought I was the only person in the world that hadn't made a Zadie. Turns out there's quite a lot of us, but. Um, yeah, Zadie or the beach pyjamas out of this, but um, yeah, I absolutely love it. So I am going to put that in my um, soon to make pile, um, which is a good thing. And there's a couple of surprise fabrics here, which I had um, had neatly forgotten. It's funny how that happens, isn't it? This one I got last year. Now this is an Atelier, Atelier Brunette. I bought this as a remnant. Um, and uh, in my review of my um, patterns that I just very very quickly did there this would make a beautiful Libby shirt um, oh, 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 oh. sorry very glamorously leaning down there so the Libby shirt um, is sort of quite a crop shirt so I might lengthen that a little but it's got a revere collar um, and that's quite sweet so I think that would that, that would work really well with that um, or what was the other one I picked up here? Or I haven't actually made one of these before. Let me know if you have. But I see them on Lisa Comfort all the time. She makes the um, the shift the shift dress into a top. Um, that's actually just a really simple design. Um, do you know what? actually I might even favour that. I think that would be really nice in that fabric um, with a pair of jeans. Um, so again, I think I'm going to put that onto the need to make quickly pile, which you can now see is. Um, quite big as it goes and then this fabric oh my word look at this I absolutely adore this very creased I'm sorry about that um, I washed it and then put it into my fabric stash and this is a beautiful um, uh, Lady McElroy that um, this goes from Felicity Fabrics um, and I am going to and I know exactly what I'm going to do with this 
um, I haven't had a chance to talk about it yet, but I, I was asked um, by the Sussex Street seamstress if I'd make a Tillington blouse, um, which I did. I twirled in a Georgette, which I'll show you in a recent makes video coming up very soon. And I like it that much that I want to use this fabric to make another one of those. It's a beautiful gypsy style blouse with um, shearing on the sleeves. So I really look forward to that. Um, and again, that can be added to my pile. Okay, so that's the sort of lighter weight and more viscose ones done. Now, a big old pile of jersey here. Um, the one on the top here, um, I'm not quite sure why I keep it. Um, I got this as part of a sort of a, a remnants bundle, if you like, um, uh, from Colville Fabrics a long time ago. It's got these lovely roses on it and it's red. So I'm not actually sure there's enough there to do very much with. Um, but I am going to um, add that to my pile and I'm going to make something very simple out of it. So I'm going to make a Tabitha t-shirt um, by Tilly and the Buttons, that one. Because um, I just think that would be a nice simple basic. This one I'm going to pass over for now. Um, it's a beautiful scuba, again from Colville Fabrics ironically enough. Um, I made a Lucy jumpsuit out of that last year. So I don't have any current plans for that one for now. I've got lots of this left. This is a very smooth um, uh, jersey. It doesn't have, it's a, it's a Ponteromi, Ponteromi, a Ponteroma. It doesn't have a lot of stretch actually. Um, definitely enough there to make a t-shirt. I do love this colour. Um, I made a, um, a wrap top from AK Patterns in this last year, um, the name of which has just gone out of my head. But it is a lovely fabric to work with. It's very stable. Um, this actually would make a really nice billy, um, the latest release from Tilly and the Buttons. Um, or let's have a look, so I've got loads of um, jersey patterns. Um, so let me just whiz through these. Uh, I've got the cow neck, I've got the ED, I've got the lark tee, Agnes, not enough stretch in the Agnes for that I don't think. Um, that's the LB top, that's not suitable. Would make a quite a nice wanted, um, I don't know if you remember the, um, the wanted top. Um, who's, who made that? Let me find my glasses. Um, Vanessa Pouze. Um, it's got a beautiful um, square neck on it. Um, actually, that would be really lovely. Um, do you know, I might, yeah, I'm going to add that to my list because that would be really super, um, especially this time of year, really nice and snugly. Um, I'm really enjoying this process. I hope you can sort of. I want, you know, the purpose of the video really is to shop my stash get, and get inspired and hopefully you'll be able to do a similar thing, literally taking your own fabrics and patterns and going shopping. It's been, it's been great so far. I'm going to add those two together. It's a bit like snap. Um, I didn't realise, you know, how much black jersey I had. Um, I'm going to say this is the same company. So I think this is FC Studios. I think that's correct. They're both black jersey. Had no idea I had two lots of it. Lots of things I can make with that. Um, let's go back through my list here. I love a band Mandy boat tee, um, so I could make one of those. Um, let's look, look what else I've got. Uh, that's a Tabitha t-shirt. Toaster is too, it needs to be thicker than a toaster. But I could make a Maven, uh, a Somerset by Maven. That's the one that's got the really nice boat neck and then sort of um, sleeves that go out into sort of a lovely um, puffy uh, sort of bishop sleeve, if you like, with the cuff. I think that would look really super. Um, it's quite a stable jersey, so you, you'd be quite dramatic, I think, in that one, which would be good fun. Um, What's that one? Well, that's the Lacala um, crossover top, which in fact I did, that's exactly what I used. Um, that's the Lacala was the one that crosses over like this, and then I actually added a, a neck band to it um, because the, the V was too low, um, which was a bit revealing. Or, um, or an ED, um, I don't know if you can see that in my packet there, but the ED is a very simple um, boat neck as well. Um, so actually that would be really nice to add an add a ED to my, um, to my wearable collection. That could be a thing. I might pop that down there um, as a potential for sure. 
I've got some uh, some cream jersey here. Again, this is Pontaroma. Again, this is very thick. Now I've made a number of things out of this and it doesn't keep its cream color. So I'm gonna pass this one by because every time I wash it, it comes out a different color, um, which is probably why I've still got um, some of it left in my stash, um, which is a bit of a shame. Um, there's a remnant here of a gray jersey. Again, I think I'm gonna add this um, this is what I made, um, the Staley top from Elba Textiles. Um, the Staley top, it, it, you get a t-shirt at the top and then a sort of a, um, an over. Uh, the the t-shirt is slightly longer and then the, the over sweatshirt, if you like, is slightly shorter. So you, you get a reveal of the t-shirt. I'll put a picture of it in here. And that's what they made the t-shirt out of. Um, but I didn't quite get the, the neckline right on that and it puckered quite a bit. Um, today's outfit is a, um, a very, very old Molly dress um, from the Sew Over It e one of the original Sew Over It ebooks. Um, I wear this all the time and it's snuggly and warm. So that's that one. I don't need to make anything with that one. And then the last two jerseys here, um, these, uh, this one's from Felicity Fabrics as well. Beautiful viscose jersey. Um, such a lovely drape on this. I absolutely adore this colour. Um, now I am going to make um, a brand new style top. Oh, I'm going to make the Vera out of this, which is from Forget Me Not Patterns. Um, it's a free pattern, so please do take a chance to have a look at that. Um, it's beautiful V-neck top, and again bishop sleeves on that, which I think is going to look really lovely. So I can't wait to make that. Um, and this one is going to be. I think it's going to be called the Iris T, um, the Iris T-shirt, and the Iris T-shirt um, has a beautiful detail. It's got a pleat on the uh, on the shoulder. You can either make it three quarter length with the the pleat here, or short with the pleat there. So those are both adding being added to my list as well. The final bit of fabric in the jersey box was some swimwear fabric, um, so I'm going to leave that to one side now because. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't need to use that for now. So I'm going to put that in my summer box, which is just down there. Uh, and then finally, um, bottom weight fabrics. Let's have a look. I lean right across here and grab these. Uh, let's start with this one. So I bought this. Um, this was from... Uh, oh, I'm still trying to think of the name of the London market. Not Gold Talk Road. Um, hang on a sec, let me go look it up. Wal Walthamstow in London, Walthamstow Fabric Market. I'm sorry about that. Why does that happen to me? It's because nobody's talking about going out anymore. People used to talk about Walthamstow all the time. So again, this is a, um, a fabric I picked up from there. It was a very amazing value at the time. Um, and this one, um, I'm probably gonna hold on to this for now because um, I'm nervous about using it. Not because it was expensive, it's, slightly itchy so I think I'm going to need to come up with a, um, a lined coat. Now I always like the idea of the um, um, of a sort of an open coat maybe oh actually maybe a um, Sapporo coat I think it's called. Um, Fabric Godmother has currently got some kits for that but that actually would be really lovely because you could play with the direction of that. Mm, that's really good. I haven't bought any patterns for ages, but um, we had a Felicity Fabric Secret Santa and um, Santa kindly got me a voucher from um, the fold line so I could actually put that towards getting the Sapporo coat um, pattern and use this fabric because I know that's a lined jacket. Um, that would be really super. Um, I, I also have here, um, I'm going to get it out of the folder, I don't think you're going to see that very well. Um, that's the Chloe coat, um, that's from Le Victor Maison. Um, and that's just a very simple open coat um, and I just think that would work really well for. Um, so I am going to add that to my list because I've had that fabric for um, a long time really in, in terms of fabric of course. And then finally um, these are the bottom weight fabrics. So I've got some denim here. Um, this uh, I can't actually remember where I got that from but there's enough there to maybe make a nest skirt um, from Tilly and the Buttons, which I really like. Um, I've got some black twill here. This came from Sew Over It. And I'm going to make, um, I'd like to make some cigarette trousers in that, but probably not anytime soon. Um, there's 
a little bit of this left. I got this from Colville Fabrics. Um, I made some uh, the trousers um, from Tilly and the Buttons. Um, let me just transfer these patterns over. Two seconds. Sophia, and that was it, Sophia um, dungarees. I made those from that um, and really enjoyed that, which is lovely. Um, but not, don't need to add that to my list anytime soon. Again, there's more twill there from Sew Over It. Um, I've got a lovely piece of denim here. Um, it's quite a lightweight denim actually. Um, so I need to put some thought into that. Um, again, if you've got any ideas as to what I can do with a lightweight denim, I really appreciate it. Um, this is a beautiful fabric. Uh, again, not sure what to do with it. I made, made some, oh, I've made some trousers from closet, Pietro trousers from closet core patterns in these. Didn't get the sizing quite right, um, so they were a bit baggy around the bum because I've got a flat bum. But I think I would like to make um, some ultimate culottes from Sew so Over It. I've never quite nailed that pattern. And I think in that fabric, a lovely amount of drape that that's got, that would be really nice. So I can add that to my plans. Beautiful cord here. Again, this is a remnant left over from the jeans I made. I made the Dawn jeans, which I absolutely adore. And this is a fabric um, from Dragonfly Fabrics. So I'm going to make, um, I think it's just a simple A-line skirt in that. Um, maybe maybe the Erin skirt um, by Sew so Over It. I think they would work really well. Don't. I might have enough. To, I might have enough for a pinafore actually, the olive pinafore which I made recently. Um, maybe not quite enough for that, um, but because uh, it's just remnant left over. But that would be really nice. I'm just trying to think what else I've got here that um, I might be able to might be able to make. Um, oh, actually, the Clio. That doesn't take a lot of fabric, does it? Let's have a look here. Size four. Uh, supplies. Do, do, do. Where does it say how much I need on that one? Mini length. Oh yes, 1.2 meters. There we go. That is going to the top of my top of my list. Um, isn't it funny how you can just suddenly go? Yeah, that that's perfect for that. So that is going over there, <laughs> glamorously, um, to be in my list. Couple last couple of fabrics here. A remnant here of some beautiful. Um, it's coming up sort of brownie but it's actually really deep aubergine don't have any current plans for that one um, and then the last one I have actually got quite a lot of is this beautiful chocolate um, baby cord and I would quite like to make I'm not even sure if I've got a pattern for it um, a darn, a, the Dana dress or it looked like well, the Dana dress I think it's called looks quite similar to Darling Ranges um, so because of a v-neck with buttons, although I think Darling Rangers has got a gathered skirt and I'd like just a simple straight down. Sort of like a shirt dress without the collar, I think. Um, so that is my designs for that one. So there's lots of plans there. Um, and thank you for your, uh, well, thank you for being here. I love, I love you being here. I just absolutely love you showing you what, I'm, what I've got. And hopefully I can give you some inspiration there to get into your own um, fabric stash and pattern pattern stash and see what you can go shopping with and um, and create and now linking straight on to this video will be my sewing plans for 2021 and it's that video that will come out first um, because they are my plans these this is my plans but I wanted to show you the process of how I got to that because um, people are always asking me how do you how do you choose what pattern goes with what fabric etc um, and yeah, I wanted you to see me doing this. This is just me being me. So until next time, um, please stay safe and well. I'm going to watch back the video and write down below as many of the patterns as I can um, and as many of the links to um, the patterns at least and, and some of the, well, I'll, I'll write down the, the fabric shops and the, and the patterns as well so that if there's anything that's inspired you there, you can, you can go off and get those. If you haven't already, please do subscribe to my channel. It means the world to me. Um, and I do have ways you can support the channel. Um, the one is subscribing to me on YouTube, um, but also over on Instagram as well, where I am so, 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 so mad. Thank you to everyone that has subscribed. Um, but also I'd love it if you could buy me a coffee. 
just for the price of a cup of tea or coffee um, that help really helps my channel um, keep it invested in um, keep the ideas coming people love to hear from you in, in terms of comments and that's my favorite um, yeah just a favorite thing of mine our interaction and it means the world to me so stay safe and well and I hope to see you again very soon